Hi everyone, welcome to Cock County 4-H. Um, today we're going to talk about what 4-H is and we're going to talk a little bit about litter and why we should recycle. So, what is 4-H? Um, most of you guys have seen it in your classrooms if you're in older grades, um, but you still aren't sure how to get involved. So, in 4-H, um, we have these four H's in our clover and they stand for four things. So those four things are head, heart, hands, and health. So um, when we say the pledge, we say, I pledge my head to clearer thinking, my heart to greater loyalty, my hands to larger service, and my health to better living for my club, my community, my country, and my world. So really what you're doing there is um, you're talking about how you're going to do things and how you're going to make things better. So here in Cock County in our 4-H program, we have several things that you can get involved in. You can get involved in our horse club, um, our livestock judging teams. Um, we have an honor club that's up and coming. If you're interested in that, you can contact the extension office and we'll get you involved. And um, we also have some new project groups that are coming up and that are going to be really exciting. So keep an eye out for those and um, just make sure that you stay in the loop so you can be involved. We have a Facebook page that you can follow or you can have your parents follow so that you can get involved. And um, also you can reach out to us at the office and um, I'll give you our phone number and our address later so that you can get involved and get into things that we have going on. So let's get going and let's get talking about litter and recycling. So first off, what is litter? So we have a little video here that we're going to watch just a little bit of to kind of see and um, what litter is and what it does. So, as you guys saw there, um, litter is going to be stuff that goes into your environment. It's going to be stuff that goes into your environment that you don't quite um, want there. So, things like plastic bottles, glass, cans, um, paper, things that normally need to go in the trash or into a recycling bin um, that go into your environment that you don't want. That's what litter is going to be. So think about some places and some things that you see that are litter and um, that need to be properly disposed of. So now that we've talked about what litter is, let's talk about how it affects us as Tennesseans. So here's just a short video that talks about litter in the state of Tennessee. So there you guys kind of saw, there you guys, there you guys kind of saw um, what litter is and how it affects the state of Tennessee. So in that video they said that it cost us 15 million dollars a year to clean up litter. I don't know about you guys but that seems like a lot of money to me just to focus on cleaning up litter that people put out into the environment. So think of some ways or some reasons that you think we spend so much money on litter and brainstorm on that a little bit, think about it. And some things that I came up with, I thought maybe it's a job and people get paid to clean it up. So that $15 million is spent on those people's salaries. And 
Also, maybe those materials that they use to clean up litter are kind of costly, so they have to be um, careful not to get cut by glass, so the gloves that they have to use, the bags that they have to put it in, and um, the things that they use to clean it up, maybe all of those materials are just a little bit expensive. So, today we're going to talk about a couple main things. We're going to talk about why people litter, and why we think they litter, and what the effects of littering are, and why do we need to prevent it, and how do we prevent it. So, why do some people litter? Why do you think they do that? Um, some things that I came up with, maybe it's just easier to litter than it is to throw it away, or at least that's what they think. Maybe it's closer to throw it on the ground than it is to get to the trash can. And um, maybe they're just too lazy to find that trash can. And um, maybe they're at a concert or a sporting event or something like that, and they don't feel responsible, and they think it's somebody else's job to clean that stuff up. Maybe it's just a place where they're used to seeing litter around, and they think it's normal for people to just throw their trash on the ground. Um, and maybe they just don't know what littering does to the environment. So maybe they don't know what the effects of it are. Um, so when people don't know those things and they still litter, they come up with some excuses. Or if they do know what littering does, they'll come up with some excuses. They'll say, oh, there was already trash on the ground. I wasn't the first person to litter there. It's okay. Um, it was just one time. It was one wrapper. I won't do it again. Um, I mean, I've seen my friends do it. It's not that big of a deal. So why shouldn't I? And also they'll be like, they'll say things like, well, there wasn't a trash can, so I just threw it wherever was convenient. Those are all excuses, and, and you know that it's not the right thing to do, and you should encourage them to find that trash can and, or recycling bin and use it. So what are the effects of littering? So let's watch a little bit about this. Um, there's some facts in here I found pretty shocking, um, so let's just watch this short video. So that video that you just saw has some facts in it that I found pretty shocking. Um, so up until 2010, humans can humans had created 6.3 billion tons of trash. That's a whole lot of trash. 9% um, of that trash, they recycled, so we don't have to worry about it. It's already been reused. 12% of that trash was incinerated. That means they burned it. So again, we don't have to worry about that trash. It's already gone. But of that... 6.3 billion tons, 79% of it was either put into a landfill or it was just thrown out um, and into our environment. So it ended up in our waterways, it harmed our plants and animals, um, and then those animals can eat that litter and it can kill them. It also just doesn't look good when it's out in our environment. So those are kind of some of the effects of litter um, that I saw. So why do we need to prevent it? Well, number one, it costed us a lot of money. $15 billion is a whole lot of money. It pollutes those waterways, those environments that um, animals live in, fish live in. It also pollutes your environment. So maybe, as you can see down here on the picture in the corner, um, your environment that day is the playground, and it's got a whole bunch of trash on it. So that doesn't make you want to play on it. It doesn't look good. It's an eyesore. Um, also, maybe that trash has fallen out of a car. Um, on their way to take it off or something like that and somebody else can run over it and um, so that's going to cause accidents on the roadway or it's going to cause um, harm to those people's car that they're in. 
So how long does litter stay in our environment? There were a couple of these that I was really surprised by, like um, fishing lines staying in the environment for 600 years or glass bottles staying in our environment for a million years. Um, these things we can easily dispose of if we just put them in the right places um, and they don't have to take this long to, um, to de decompose. So, how do we prevent littering? Maybe we're gonna promote recycling to prevent littering and cut down on that a little bit. So maybe we're gonna create some signs for our school, place those trash bins and those recycling bins around our school and our community. And um, we're just gonna let everybody know, hey, recycling is a good idea and we should do it. Now, you're not always gonna be able to prevent littering. You're not always gonna be able to convince everybody that littering is bad. But when you see litter out and about, you can go out, you can pick it up, and then you can encourage other people to do the same. You can also let others know the effects of littering. So now that you know, hey, it ends up in our waterways and it's really bad, maybe you can let other people know that. If you can think of some ways to prevent littering, go ahead, write those down, and maybe you can share those with someone around you and they can help you do that to prevent littering. Now, why do we do it? How do we do it? Some people do things like keeping a recycling bin in their car, so maybe they go out and they do see some trash out, um, and it's glass or it's plastic, they can put it in that recycling bin um, and take it with them and dispose of it in the proper way. You can place more trash cans and recycling stations like we talked about, so you can even do this in your home. You can encourage your family to recycle. Um, you can, when you move trash or when you help your parents move trash, you can make sure that it's secure in your vehicle so it doesn't fall out on the roadways and cause those accidents. You can also keep that trash can closed so that the litter doesn't come out of it. So maybe you place it outside or you place it on the curb. And if you leave that trash can open, animals can get into it and spread it out and that causes more litter. So again, think about some ways you and your classmates can prevent litter from happening or you and your family can prevent litter from happening. Something that we came up with here in Cock County is a contest to promote recycling. So that's really going to encourage everybody to recycle and find new ways to use things. So we want you to come up with a creative idea. Maybe you make a piggy bank, you make um, a bird feeder, you make a pencil holder, something like that. You're gonna use recyclable materials and you can use some other things to decorate it with, that's fine. But we want your item to be mainly out of recyclable materials um, and you're gonna bring that into the extension office by November 5th at 5 p November 3rd at 5 p.m. So that deadline is November 3rd at 5 p.m. Um, and you're gonna get your piece of um, recyclable items, whatever it is that you come up with, whatever it is that you make, entered into a contest, um, and the Extension Office staff is gonna judge that contest, and we'll post about the winners on our Facebook page. So, um, this is a good way for you to get involved, even though you haven't been involved before, maybe. So, um, I'm gonna give you guys some ways to keep in touch and keep in contact with us. So you can follow us on Facebook. It's UT Extension Cock County um, on Facebook. You can come into the office and have a chat with us and tell us what it is that you want to get involved in. And um, we are in the court. We're in the jail annex building. Our address is um, 360 East Main Street, and we're in room 110. So. And you can find us here or you can call us up on the phone and that phone number is 423-623-7531. Um, so if you need us in any way, you can call us, you can reach out um, and we'll get back with you and we can help you get involved in whatever it is that you want to get involved with. And um, I encourage you guys, if you liked this video, if you thought 4-H was interesting, um, look on the Tennessee 4-H website. So it's 4-H.Tennessee.edu. Um, and then there's a tab at the top that says what interests you. So you're going to look at that tab and there's going to be all kinds of interesting things to get involved in. If one of those really sticks out to you and you think, wow, I really want to do that, um, call us up, come in, visit us, message us on Facebook, whatever that may be, um, and let us know that that's something that you really want to get involved in. Thank you guys for your time and I hope you guys like the contest we do this month and enter it.